Hello. This is Suggested Systems 6. A sound design system built around short delays. So Dual Analog, the company who make this delay one thing, hired me to make a demo of this module, which is a delay unit, specialised for short delays from 1 millisecond to 50 milliseconds. But to explore one short delay is really to explore all similarly capable short delays and the unique things that you can cook up with them. So while we'll happen to be using this particular module today, most of the same principles we'll explore apply to other delays capable of similarly short times, especially flexible digital ones that you might already own, both in hardware and software. Short delays let you do really bonkers sounding things, like making tones out of tiny short bursts of sound, making choruses, flanges, colossal bass drums, and making other synths and drum machines just sound insane. It's like a force multiplier for sound. There is something I should say about the delay one which makes it notable and that's it's not that easy apparently to make an analog short delay that doesn't have sort of clock noise and whine and other sort of undesirable artifacts. Digital delays will be able to do similar sounds. Plugins of course too. So watch on if you would like to see some of the madness that a delay can do. And so what is this case first? Well, uh, this is a <laughs> sinusoda case uh, with a little twiddly knob on the side that I added. And basically the idea of this um, system is to heavily modulate the delay one. I have a VCO and an envelope generator and a VCA. And I'm hoping to use the VCO to create little short stabs of sound and, you know, the envelope generator and the VCA together. And I'm going to feed those stabs into the delay one. And then also I've got a dual LFO from Soundforce, which is clockable. I've got this Goma module from Black Noise Modular, which is a attenuverter and mixer. It is essential to have mixers in systems like this for reasons that you will discover. A Turing machine, this is the vintage 2012 one, uh, which creates stepped random voltages, also good for modulating this. And I have a filter here. This is the micro VCF6. And that's there because um, we're going to be able to do some stuff where we push the settings of delay one, like ridiculously, and it's going to create undesirable noise. We're going to filter it out with the filter. The filter, however, is really important for um, Kapla strong synthesis, which we'll try and do in its traditional way, as is noise, uh, which is present here on the cherry machine. Now, interestingly, I've got a few little toys around me which can make noise, which are not this, um, because if you have a line input module, of course, you can feed any external source, make noise out of it. So Maritha, I think, is going to be interesting. Obviously, down here, I also have a couple of one-use strips with a micro ornament crime, which is like versatile module that does things. Apex will kick out envelopes for us. This is the Tobitech sequencer, although I don't know if we'll end up using it but it would be very good for clocking the dual LFO at different rates, for clocking the cheering machine at different rates. And if, for example, you were just using straight clock sources, then your LFO would just wobble predictably forward and back. But if you were to use a sequencer and send an irregular clock pattern into the tap input, then suddenly your LFO would be changing rates and times as it responded to the different patterns it gets from the sequencer. So... I might not do that in this, but it is just worth noting. What I don't have here is I don't have an envelope follower. And an envelope follower takes um, signals like drums and voices and it smooths them out, turns them into a control voltage that you could use to push around the delay. And if the sound that you're affecting is also influencing the settings of the delay, it just makes for this more unified, interesting sound. So I kind of bit the bullet here and just said, hey, let's just modulate this massively. 
but it's enough stuff to show the basic principles of short delays and some of the fun you can have when you push them around a bit. I feel I should just very quickly blast through this panel so you understand what's in this, like, delay unit, which is to say that you have a coarse and fine-tuned control for the delay times, and it goes down to 50 milliseconds, more later on ways that we can push it beyond the default settings. This is the time mod, which if you feed, like, an LFO or some kind of interesting voltage source in here, you can push around the time, and that's positively or negatively. Uh, damping control is a filter. There's actually a filter, low pass and a high pass, built into the feedback path, and you can control the settings and whether it's low or high pass with this, and you can modulate that parameter. This is really important for uh, creating car plus strong just in the module. Uh, we'll look at a more official way of doing it. Feedback control to control how the delays feed back on themselves. And there's a modulation control. Plus, there is a two different ways of summing that feedback, whether it's positive or negative phase, which have different sounds. And then this last control is blend. That would be dry and wet. So it's a dry, wet control. Very important if you're doing like choruses and things where you actually might want to hear some of the original signal blended in up to you obviously and there's an attenuator because there are cv inputs for all of these things very quickly pluck noteworthy because if you send a gate into that it will create a little white noise burst and then there are two outputs here plus and minus the plus and the minus are phase inverted versions of each other. Now, this is a really nice thing for creating a kind of instant pseudo stereo. But with one really important caveat that I feel I must point out, it's why I'm not using this loads in this video, is that unfortunately, because these are out of phase, if you listen to your um, audio collapsed in mono, the delay will disappear uh, because the no signal will sum them but it's there in situations where you control the playback and you know it's going to be played in stereo then very cool thing to have it just sounds lovely lastly an input it's important and a delay output just the output of the delay you have got a one volt per octave input to play the time which is actually calibrated and tuned because of course this can be you can do car plus strong synthesis with this which we'll get to and then very finally hf output and input that is an inbuilt clock there's this really high rate clock that's actually doing all of the sort of analog magic behind the scenes to create short delay times that don't have clock wine you can replace the clock with something else and extend the delay times something that we will do later and you can also hear the clock um in short, Coupler strong would create string sounds a physical modeling approach I'll show on screen the sort of Wikipedia diagram of it. You can see on the left hand side, you've got a noise burst and then you have a filter and a delay. And there's this kind of looped feedback with the plus being a mixer. So we need to create a little burst of noise. We need to then feed it into a delay line, filter it and then feed it back into itself. And that will create the sound. So let's do that. So here is an implementation of the Carpla Strong um, patch. Sounds just like a guitar. So <laughs> and to quickly deconstruct it, we have white noise and we feed white noise into a VCA. A little envelope, a plucky envelope, controls that VCA to make the white noise become plucky. You then feed that into a mixer. You then feed that to the output but you also feed a copy into the delay line and then you have a reasonable amount of feedback enough with a short enough time to basically ring out and sort of excite that little burst it then runs into a filter it runs back into the mixer and it gets copied back around so there's a kind of feedback loop I must point out the delay one is kind of specialized for this in a couple of noteworthy ways. Namely, the damping circuit has a filter in it and there is a pluck input that will actually create the white noise burst right in the module. Oof. Things become very bassy. We should try and sequence this sound. And feed it into the volt per octave. 
sound a bit like FM, a bit like mega drivey. Obviously not that process, it's not FM at all. But listen how all we have here is white noise and a delay line. And we've got like an oscillator. We've got a, a thing that sounds like music. <laughs> a thing that sounds like a whole like idea. I couldn't resist it. We've added a little uh, T8. I'm reminded with some irony that the uh, TB303 was intended as a thing that could uh, replace your bass guitarist. But now uh, the thing that I've created a bass synth sound from is replacing the thing that would replace my bass guitar. Sorry, mate, you're not needed. Sounds good, that though, doesn't it? I mean, like, it's so simple. Okay, so... Oh, good grief. <laughs> okay, so we were using white noise. And now that is only one thing that you can use to excite a car plus strong delay line. So the next thing we should try is different exciters. Here, let's use the IntelliGels Dixie 2, and I'm gonna use the uh, square wave as the excitation source. Yeah. Note that um, I have multed the one volt drop to input so that the uh, excitation source's pitch is changing as well, which is nice. Not essential, though. And of course, different uh, waveforms will have different tonalities. That actually sounds really interesting. I like making the pitch of the Dixie go crazy. And it's just like, it's almost like a sort of form of a uh, sync. Because really the pitch is being determined by the one volt per octave signal going into the time of the delay itself. And so the sort of excitation source that we use can be pretty wacky and you still get like this sort of the same riff. So this is messing with the filter that we've got in the path just to make things go even crazier. And then if we use the other side of our dual LFO and we'll modulate the FM input. Pretty nuts, isn't it? Weird. I like it. It's like <laughs> using oscillators in a very non-traditional way, I suppose. What is a traditional way for an art form that's only, you know, 50 years old? I think there's one more thing that we should definitely try, and that would be this, the Soma Ether. Okay, so for fun measure here, let's use the Soma Ether. Now this is a thing that's like an RF receiver. It's gonna pick up noise from objects, electrical, electromagnetic noise, basically, I think. If I turn it on, it is now the thing that is replacing white noise. Let it listen to my phone. Let it listen. Noise coming from digital modules. It 
touch it to the metal of the case. So that's pressing it against the uh, Plum Audio OC. exciters and see what excites you. So in the manual for the delay one there's a really interesting patch I want to try which is making kit drums from this thing. And we do that by sending a envelope into it and no white noise. In fact actually the sharp edge of the envelope fed into the input plus using the same envelope to modulate the delay time can create these kind of swept um, kicks. So if I take the output of my envelope generator and feed it into the in, oof, that's with high feedback and low damping. That sharp edge of that control voltage signal is enough to make this excite. And then if we molt, that is copy, that signal to the time, oof, we get be whips and whoops. Oof, that's changing the high pass damping mode. Oof. Yeah, that's the stuff. I've got a nutty idea. What if I molt this to control the sync in on my T8? That is extremely weird and somewhat impractical, but I quite enjoy it. Uh, that is to say, using manual advancement to step through a drum machine whilst also triggering my weird kick with it. Um, probably a better implementation would be using manual advancement into the sequencer as well, and then programming the kicks to come in at certain times. So the whole point is you get this whole manual wonky hand played effect, and you can then have kicks that didn't just occur on every single step that that occurs on. But food for thought. Food for thought. There are many ways to skin cats. Don't skin cats. That's not cool. Yeah. Okay, so there's something I want to try here, which I think teaches us a bit of a lesson about our willingness to accept modules as they are or push them further. And that is the fact that the delay one has got really short delay times. We know this. We can create kind of chorusy, flangy things with short times. But what if we want long? Well, there is a way that we can do this, and that is this HF input. Now, HF is the clock that is inside the delay one, which runs at a really high rate. By patching into the HF, we replace the clock that's in delay one with another one. For example, an oscillator. Listen to that. You hear those long, long delays? Nice. Blend the actual original drum machine back in. Now we have long delay times. But there's something else. Depending on your high frequency hearing, there is a really annoying tone. You hear it? It's the clock. So it's 
what's called clock wine. It's actually the clock itself becomes an audible component. To get rid of this, we just literally have to filter the delay, like <laughs> just slow pass it. So if I take the output of my, um, this is what's going to my mixer, into my audio interface, and I'll plug it into my little mixer here. I will molt my drum machine, meaning I've copied it. So the drum machine both goes to the delay and the dry signal will go to this channel on here. So I turn this up, we should hear drum machine. Like that. And then what I need to do is give a filtered version of the delay, mix that in too. Simple enough. That was the filter going into the mixer. And now the output of the delay is here. And hear it. There's that wine. I'd say that's just about as low as I can get where I can no longer hear it. So, what I've noticed is that my oscillator, I'm at the highest possible setting on my Dixie 2. I'm up high as I can go. And the delay time is still, it's a bit too long. I want to go a little bit faster. I can't get in between because if I, if I snap back, the inbuilt delay is too fast. The top part of my oscillator is too slow. How can I, I want my oscillator to go faster than it is. Well, here's another little lesson in not settling, which is modules that can produce DC offsets. That is to say, they can just produce fixed voltages. It can be very useful in a case because you might find that you can push a module beyond its default settings with external modulation. So for example, if I just take the output of this channel with nothing patched into it, it's just going to produce voltage. And if I feed that into the one volt per octave input, now, this little trimmer, which is sending a voltage into the Dixie, is allowing me to push the Dixie beyond what I can make the Dixie do by itself, if that makes sense. Another example of this is that uh, the Make Noise Maths favourite uh, multifunction useful module. Everyone loves the maths. You can make maths cycles go slower using a DC offset than is possible with the panel. The same is true that if you modulate these things with LFO, they should also. Oh, that sounds pretty nuts. And then the wine almost sounds quite good by itself. Adding the delay in the drum machine, or the reverb, I should say. Well, that's weird. <laughs> Push all the things beyond their panel settings using DC offsets, LFOs, and in this case, an oscillator to reclock the module. I think historically, one of my favorite uses of short delays is for doing craft worky like hi hats. That is using really short delays to create kind of chorusing and sort of flanging. 
because if you have a high feedback with a short delay, at the right settings, you get this kind of zing. And now if we modulate the time of that zing, good things happen. So this is the time modulation amount. We're using the Soundforce dual LFO, and I've actually got this Roland T8 and I'm clocking the LFO. We're doing very extreme modulation here. So all we're doing is we're shifting the time of the delay around. We're adjusting the blend amount, that's fully wet. And if you just dial in feedback to taste, you can get just enough with just a little bit of modulation. Sine wave modulation there. So this is the more kind of craft worky thing. Go to the extreme if we push the food back. Wonderful things happen. so it doesn't ring in quite the same way. There's a gorgeous thing that happens where the, like, the actual tone of the thing you're feeding in affects the delay. You start to sort of carpless it, which is that the delay itself catches the sort of timbre. plenty of damp mod that takes a lot of the zing and ring out of it it just makes it fat so that's dry <laughs> sounds really good this is an amazing machine and then that's blended with the wet try some different shapes oh yeah do here is, uh, I would call it not advanced, because it's something that's just kind of obvious, is, you know, I want a second LFO to push this around, and I want that quiver to still be happening. So this is the importance of mixes. What I can do with the mixer is blend one dual LFO with the other dual LFO, and so create a blended signal. And I know that's really dumb. I think it's something that's easy to forget. Like you can create these kind of richer, more complex control signals by blending two things together. So if I then make this really slow, well, I've 
now got is this blended signal. Two LFOs blended together, contributing to push the delay up and down. We're coming down. We're coming back down. This is this second one, the slow one, bringing it down. Or this one is adding this kind of quiver. The first one here is going super fast. Be a job for an hour at BCA that. Delays, delays, delays. Abundantly obvious, I could spend a long time with just this patch. Man, there's just so much crap to discover. joins the party. Three or three is empty the chat. Yes! So that's the dry signal, just for reference, in case you've lost your way a little bit. It's wicked. And the real secret here is clock delay, uh, clock telephone, sorry. Clock telephone and a dumb mixer. So there's something I'm going to go for broke for on this patch, which is uh, I'm going to put a VCA in the path. This is really basic stuff, I'm conscious of that, but um, I hope this is useful because it's really like instructional. Like, as in, what I mean is it's just, it's really important to bear these things in mind. Don't settle for 
just like for non-animation, when animation is possible. Uh, so by which I mean that we can take the LFO, we can take it out of the mixer, we can run it into a VCA, and then we can run it the VCA back into the mixer. And what that's doing is we're putting a volume control before this volume control. And of course, I'm going to use the Turing machine, which is a stepped random voltage source to control how much this is being sent. And so this will now become a trimmer and this will now control how much that, you know, it gets sent. <laughs> Instant uh, Sean and Rob territory. Kind of. But I hope you're noticing your techeriness, but that's because Sean and Rob will be using short digital maximum P delays. But you know I don't know how to use Max MSP. just made the LFO really fast, so it's more pronounced when you hear it be mixed in by the, the VCA and the Turing machine. You can actually see if you have the gift of sight that the VCA is being controlled by the Turing machine here, you can see what it's doing. of insane actually i can't actually believe quite how much mileage can be pulled from such a simple thing but it really can it's so transformative it's just like it's like a force multiplier of sound so um yes short delays my friend uh, modulate them clock to modulate them and make the effort to make more complex modulation sources where you combine sources together and use VCAs with sequences or random voltage generators to control how much those modulation sources are being sent to each other and blended together on a per step basis. It brings stuff to life. It just instantly gives you so much more than just leaving it with static settings. You've got to push this stuff around. Thanks to Duranalog for sending a delay one and commissioning this video, but I hope that you see that <laughs> of being good sports because uh, obviously this is an excuse to just talk about the fantasticness of short delays and not often analog like this it is that thanks very much and may your delays be short <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 